I've always needed to set up a conceptual frame before I start working on any sculpture. Something that I'm gonna use as boundaries intellectually so I can sort of feel freedom inside of those boundaries. My goal was not really necessarily to solve mysteries or answer specific questions about consciousness, but really to start working inside that frame. It's interesting because there's many progressions in the show. You could say that the show starts completely consciously and then ends completely unconsciously. In the past year, I found myself very often in situations where I just like dug out a hole inside myself and just like let myself fall in there. And the sort of psychic spaces that were opened up would lead me to an experience of grabbing onto something like an emotion and just imagining it become more and more and more intense. So I was really curious to see how it would manifest in a show through physical objects. And so I thought that just sculpturally, I thought that intensity was something that was worth exploring. And as I was thinking about the exhibition design or about how the work was going to be displayed, one thing that clearly was very important for me was to sort of like give the chance to each piece individually to be looked at without being overwhelmed by the rest. To sort of like control the experience of the viewer in terms of the narrative or the progression that was within the show. My approach of this idea of the evolution of consciousness might be considered simplistic in a certain way. Every piece is built on this idea of a realization or an extra level of awareness. There's this idea of duality that comes in. There's that kind of progression. And as the show evolves, I think it's because there was less and less control and I leave more and more room to intuition. And at the end, the unconscious has taken over completely. I think the fact that I deal with archetypes or imaginary characters gives me the tools to actually dig inside myself. First of all, I can't do it on myself for real. I can only dig inside myself symbolically. And so when I cut off a head, it's not just an act that makes reference to violence, but it's simply a kind of symbolic gesture that lets me take the first step inside myself. And then there's other things that happened and I'm able to explore deeper. If the human figure wasn't hybridized with some fairy tale -y character, then it would simply stay an act of violence and it wouldn't lead to anything else but that. And now it's just actually something as crude as a decapitation becomes just opening a door. And then that's the beginning of the adventure for me as a sculptor. Now I have this new space to explore. The witch piece, it actually started to have a presence in my studio and quite serious, like a really strong presence. For me, it, the witch is the embodiment of life, nature, so that the enlightenment of the witch would correspond to a birth. There's something in that piece that told me that my ego had no control, that I shouldn't try to control things. And as the production of the show went further, it became clear that it was actually not just the last piece of the show, but it was actually in a deeper way, the conclusion of a step in my own transformation. I started working on the show as if I was just making sculpture from the outside. And as more and more, I, I realized that the distinction between the show and me and these ideas and myself wasn't as clear as it was at the beginning. In art, there's the transmission of the unconscious towards the conscious. As if like the essence in the work 
is something that comes intuitively from the unconscious. I think that if the viewers are truly able to connect to that essence, then there's something important that happens. Like in every important work of art, that's what happens.